just gotta love the music. Got the headphones again. Audio should be better. I guess it wasn't so bad before, but anyway, I couldn't sit in the house. It's too nice of a day out. I got the uh, garage door over here open. Here, I'll let you see. The garage door open. I have a screen for it. It's got a screen window slash door. Anyway, we're going to make a crosscut sled for this here table saw. I don't know how much of this you'll actually be able to see at this angle, but we're going to give it a shot. We're going to play with this here saw some. So the first thing I'm going to do, I got a really small thin piece of plywood, which is all I really need. I'm doing this for cutting my cutting board slat. All of these little thin slats here. Um, I need to cut and cut. And the chop box is a little old. And it doesn't always give me the best cut. So I'm hoping if I make a crosscut sled for this table saw. And uh, I may actually take the blade. You're you're sitting on my DeWalt right now. I wanted to lift it up a little higher so you get a view of this thing a little better. Can I spin this without? Oh, God, this thing weighs a ton. I don't know how much sawdust this thing's going to spit at you, but I was going to try and make it so we can uh, see it. But the first thing I actually need to do is cut a length. And I think about this wide. This is a halfway decent piece of half inch plywood. Um, let's see here. Pencil. I will use the chop box for this because it's kind of simple. And I'm just going to make it about that long. And I'll be right back. i got to plug that in so the vacuum will kick on. And that I'm not going to really spin you around for. Actually, why not? Let's spin you around so you can see me over here at the chop box. And i got to put the vacuum on it. Simple. Get all the other crap out of the way. And let's just do a quick cross cut. Again, this doesn't matter as much. And this piece of, this is only half inch, not three quarter, which is fine. But it's about the only small piece I got that's not twisted. Everything I got is kind of old and twisted. This is nice and flat on the table. So that will fill here. I can line it up to the two slots. I can put a back and a front on it, run it through there, and I'll be able to cut slat ends with it. So the next thing I need to do is make two runners. What am I going to use to do that? I have some pine. I have some, I don't want to get into this stuff. You know what? I got a slat of maple right here that might already be very close to the right width. And it is, it's very close. So what I'm going to do, and this will get noisy, folks, is sneak up on it. I gotta get used to this thing. And pick up on it. And of course, the fence is probably in the way, so you can't see what I'm doing. You know what? I think I, so I have a longer cord on here now. I think I can bring the laptop and the whole cart over here. We're rolling. We're rolling around, folks. You can actually sort of see what I'm doing. That should be better. I don't know. Am I going to hit the saw if I'm pushing this through? Probably. Just missing. Okay. So I want to take just a hair off. So put the board in there. Pin it tight against the uh, blade, and that should take 
just a hair off. And I mean just a hair. Because that's all I should have to take off. So it's going to get noisy. Be ready. It will be noisy. Because I'm going to fire it up. It's rubbing now because it hasn't cleared this yet. But I need to take a little bit more. I really should switch the blades. Turned up just a hair more or two. I have noticed is this runner and this runner are a micro millimeter off of each other. It's amazing. But they actually are. Welcome to the Sears table saw. <laughs> and I broke my lead. That's beautiful. I need a new pencil. There's a new lead because I'm not going to reload the lead when I have pencils with lead in them. So this is about the perfect size. So again, I think I'll just use the miter box. And you know what, I'll just cut it basically in half. Doesn't even have to be perfect. But I will grab a tape measure and get generally in half. So this thing that you guys can see it is about 29 and a quarter long. So that would be 14 and an eighth. Right. It doesn't sound right. No, twenty nine. Uh, twenty. It's going to be fourteen. Fifteen is thirty minus three quarters minus three eighths. So fifteen minus three eighths is fourteen and five eighths. That's what it should be. Minus the blade. So that's perfect because I got it at three quarters minus the blade. We'll make them eat. It's darn close. You know what? They're almost exact. <laughs> they are almost exact. And it goes in here like so. Slides along. This one goes in here like so. So I go on a little stiff, but a little sandpaper will take care of that. And I'm going to give my quick sanding now. I think it's cutting pretty clean considering that's a crappy cheap bit. But let's sand it now first anyways. <laughs> and I think I will use... The uh, oscillating tool for it, which again, you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm over it. I'm just putting an oscillating tool head on here with a sander head. If I get it set right, because I'm a dumbass, I'm a clips, and I'm a dumbass, and I can't do anything right. How's that for an answer? And we'll put a piece of 120 on there because that's what I grabbed. 
And of course, this sander head is bigger than the one I just had, but that's all right. And we'll do a little sanding. Again, no, this might get loud. Hope I don't take too much off. Try to just get rid of the burning swirl marks from the flame. The swirl marks aren't that bad, the burn marks are, but again, this is a cheap blade. And it's cold and dull. And that's about perfect. See this one. Just get it kind of smooth. Lock it in here. A little tight, but not terrible. And a little wax, I think, will make that perfect. So, <coughs> pop that in there, pop that in there. I need something to hold them up. What do I got? What do I got? I have this old piece of, I think it's cedar. I think that's just enough. Not quite. But it is if I double it up. So I put that underneath. Do the same thing here. Put that back in there. Hopefully it's sticking up just a hair, and it is. Bring them flush to the table here, just so everything's the same. Take this here thing and put it over. I made this just about the table width, so I can put it into there. Yeah, I should say in this too. Which side do I want to be the top, and which side do I want to be the bottom? I think I'll make this the bottom. You actually want the smoother side on the bottom. I'll give it a quick sanding. Who's on here? I can't see that far away. Jeff, how's it going? It's going to get noisy. Not terribly. How bad does this pick up the sander? This microphone. Picking it up real loud, or is it just annoying? I believe this thing's supposed to have auto cancelers, so it should turn it down a little bit. As I fire up the camera.
He's a really good sander. I like a better than Tom sander for this kind of work. They're a lot more controllable. And that should do it just fine. Just PT fine. Covering sail dust. I need a rag. Let's get me a rag. So I can clean it off. And this is just paint grade scrap. Um, it's not even birch or anything. It's just, uh, I don't even think it's poplar. I think it's just paint grade pine. It is sand, you know, sand grade, paint grade, sanded. There we go. And you know what? It looks pretty square to everything. So, as a temporary thing, let's bring these out here and make sure they're somewhat flush with the ends. And we'll put a little mark there and a little mark there because we're going to just use a dab of goo and a dab of super glue to top it off. And I'm almost out of, my I think I am out of. <laughs> um, the accelerator for the super glue, but that's all right. And I want to use very little, so I got my little baby bot. Baby bot, I love this thing. And I'm gonna put just a few little dabs here and there. I actually need to move my spacer back because I can tell it's too far forward. It's not holding it up. There we go. And then we use a dab or two. Whoa, that's way too much. Way, way, way too much. Way, way, way too much. I don't want it to glue to the tabletop. <laughs> This is supposed to be medium and it's kind of running. The super glue. I think I will put a little more actual glue because that'll clean off. And the super glue is just there to be an insta clamp. And I didn't mark where they're going to go here, but it's right here and right about there. So if I spray a little, if I have any, oh, I guess not. Oh, there's a little bit. If I hold it perfectly level, I get a little bit. Uh, I'm done. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it'll still work. And I just squish this down and hold it for a second hopefully the super glue will hold it in place hopefully without gluing it to the table that will be obnoxious what is up spc we got jeff and matt what's up matt hopefully that's holding and it seems like it is and I can gently take it out so I don't misline it. And I will hit it with some tack nails, which I should have had out and ready. And I don't. 
Where's my, even my micro nailer? There's my micro nailer. Pin nailer. And what do I have in there for it? Nothing. Which is perfect. So I will get a stick of micro nails and put them in the micro nailer and get out all the air equipment, which probably should have had out already. Probably should have had this all prepped already, but you know, it's me. I'm a dumbass. Where's my little compressor? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> little baby compressor. I love this compressor. It's kind of quiet. It takes forever <laughs> to charge and fill the tank. But for doing this micro nailing, it's awesome. Which is what it's for. And it actually came with that gun. Well, not that gun, but a similar gun. And uh, now I need an air hose. Let's go over here. Like I said, I probably should have had all this done already, but, you know, who thinks that far ahead, right? Certainly not me. I think this is a good hose. It's nice and short. I have a couple of them that have holes in them. None of my air hoses are new. <laughs> They're all ancient. In fact, most of them have been remade. I make new ones. <laughs> so they get holes in them and I make them shorter and shorter and shorter. And I should oil this so that it used it in a very long time. Let's put some oil in it. Wow, the compressor's charging. Simco synthetic gun oil. I love this stuff. All you need is a drop because the minute the air gets in there and pressurizes it, it will push it through the gun. You do not have to flood these. Everyone floods them. I do like this bobble head. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a bobble head. And charge the gun. How much pressure do I have? Enough. Now I have these little itty bitty, here I'll even show you. They're little itty bitty half inch long pin nails. They're micro or pin nails. And uh, hopefully they won't shoot all the way through. They will be enough to hold this. without doing any damage. So the glue actually dries. And that's that. So now, let's turn that noisy thing off. And now, I can wipe off any excess glue. And this thing should be ready to float. And it is. It's a little sticky, but it's, it's actually about perfect considering I haven't waxed it yet. Once I wax it, it'll be super slippery. So the next step is to put a leading bench in it, front piece here. And that really doesn't need to be square, or straight, or perfect. It's nice as it is, and I got glue all over the top. Shape, but that's all right. I'll stand that back off. Loudness. There we go, all clean. It's going to get freaking glue on it again. That actually fits in there pretty well. <coughs> and uh, put a front on and a back on. Now, again, this is a very thin, small sled that I'm making. What's up, Viking? Leave it there. 
I can't really see the screen and read chat, but <clears throat> then you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, this is a small sled that is just for me making cutting boards. That's all this, this is going to be for for now on this table saw. And hopefully I can get cleaner cuts on this. Um, I need now some uprights. What do I have for junky plywood? Or junky wood in general that I can use for the front skid. Now, normally I say plywood because you really kind of want to use plywood because plywood's more stable. It won't bend and warp and break and change its shape like standard wood does. But, oh, I do have a thin sheet here. This is half inch. I might use this on the back. I probably will use this on the back, although it already looks a little bowed, and it is. So maybe I will use it on the front. <laughs> um, let me think. I might rip this in half, not quite half, so it's a little thicker. I think I'm going to. And I'm just going to use a random wedge. That's not quite half. I have a shelf here. Why do I keep putting everything on the wing? I actually have a shelf here for just... And let's go right about here-ish. Right around there. And that way I can double it up, but it's only... Um, it needs to be thicker than that. Um, how high am I going to put this blade? Well, I have to think about this for a minute because it needs to be taller. But it doesn't need to be super tall because I'm never going to use it for super tall cuts. Let's see. I think I'm going to do it right around there. That way I glue the little piece on the top of the top piece, because when you run it through, it'll make this thing stronger, if that makes sense. Yeah, that'll work. It's going to get loud here, people, again. It's all time. <clears throat> Running the saw. Not quite straight. Either that or the fence isn't quite straight because it's pinching its backside, but it's minor. It's very little. So we want this at the top. And the reason you want it at the top is because when I run it through, it's going to cut a slot, and you want the strength at the top because the bottom won't freaking matter because it'll be cut in half. <laughs> So, we'll glue and pin this together. And it might get loud again because the uh, compressor is going to charge up. Oh, guess not. I think it's full. And plug in the pin nailer. And add a little glue. I actually want the rip I just made on top. And this is mildly bowed, but it really doesn't matter because it's the front face that does nothing but hold the sled in place. So, let's add a little glue. Doesn't need to be a lot because it's just a... Again, this is a temporary thing. This is not going to be my permanent sled. This is just one that I'm making. Right now, because I need one right now. I really want to make a nice one for this table saw eventually. But for now, I'm 
not too concerned about it. And I guess that isn't long enough. It didn't go through. I guess I got to get longer nails. I have one inch. I'm scared they're going to go through. I don't have any three quarter. I don't think. Oh yeah, one and one and a quarter, right? Yeah. Well, if I use the one inch and I angle it, it won't pop through, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully! Because these half inch are exactly half inch, and the plywood is just under half inch. And these are one inch, I hope. Let's try that right again. Where the glue completely sets up. Not that it totally matters here, but if I angle it, it won't pop through, but it will hold. Correct. There you go. And of course, I don't want to do it in the middle, like I just did, because it'll hit the blade. <laughs> but that's all right. these things are actually like brass or something, anyways. So they won't really hurt the blade much. And they just hold it while it's gluing up. Somewhere around here, I have a rag. What did I do with it? I threw it underneath here. So what are you guys all up to? What's up, Head Fog? Michael Cassell? Vince? How's everybody doing this afternoon? I'm just goofing off, if you can't tell. And then we do the same thing. Actually, I think I gotta cut this down and wait because it's loading and it being longer than the sled is. And I got a pencil here somewhere, so I just threw it down here. I gotta get a little more organized, I guess, huh? This was a spur of the moment thing. And right around there, chop box action over here where you guys can't see me, and I'm not gonna move the camera yet because it's just not worth it. <laughs> And let's give it a quick sanding noise, people. Be ready. It's going to get noisy. Again, I don't know how much this feeds through the camera or the mic. Uh, it's got to get done. Get rid of them slivers. Like that one right. And I'm not worried about how it looks. I just don't want slivers. And then this is going to go on front here. Like so. And again, I'm putting the fat on top because that's the only place it's not going to cut through. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be perfectly square or anything. It's nice if it's close, but it doesn't really need to be. And again, let's just add a little glue and nail it up. Nail her up. And again, we don't want to put it in the middle because that's where the blade's going to be.
Let's see. It's going to be. Well, let's mark where the blade's going to be so I don't keep uh, putting nails in the way. Again, these micro nails won't even hurt this blade. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. So it's going to be right here. So don't put any nails right there. And that's right around here somewhere. So no nails in that area. Just to be on the safe side. And that should do it. Get rid of excess goo. Goose. Excess goose. Now, yeah, that's going to limit me on how tall I can set the blade because otherwise I'll cut right through this and then this becomes pointless. The whole point of this one here. Oh, I just did it backwards, didn't I? You dumbass. This should have been here. Screw me. Oh, well, I think I can pull it off with those micro nails. I can. That bites. What a dumbass. You do. These things hold pretty good for a little baby pin. That bites. Got to pull all those little pins now. <laughs> That was pretty dumb. But it is me, so what would you expect? Let's get rid of all these micro nails that I just put in here. Like a dumbass. Of course, they're breaking. Damn it. The kid just pound them over. They are like little micro nails. See if I can pull some of them out. Really need better linesman pliers. These things are so old, they got no grip. <laughs> Let's see what I got. Got those, got those. These will work. These will actually work really well. This should work. Nope, breaking it. They're so tiny. So very tiny. It's just breaking off. Well, that's not good. Hmm. That's a major bummer. That was really stupid of me. Really, really stupid of me. But you know what? Most of the way out. And we'll just standard grind them off after that. Should stop rolling. That's what I gotta do. Just pull. And they sort of come out. And then, I'll just stand them. That was really dumb. Really, really dumb. Oh, well. I've done worse. I have done worse. I need my garbage can. Where's my garbage can? I don't have my garbage can in here. It's still in the car. They just took the garbage down, but I can use this box. And believe it or not, these things are so wimpy, I can probably just sand them off. Or not. They're just putting a hole in the sandpaper. All right. Well, they get the grinder treatment then. <laughs> the grinder it is.
Good thing this is just a temporary sled, huh? You guys getting a good laugh at me? I would. I'd be laughing if I were you. That took care of it. Put that right here because I have a feeling I'm going to need it again. Because there's some sticking out of this. These should come out easier though because they're in, in green as a plywood. Yeah, they still break off. Sad. Sad, sad, sad. I did a dummy. I pulled a llama. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? It was expected, wasn't it? That all get rid of the glue where I can. And hit this with the grinder. See, I knew I was gonna need that grinder again. Come on. All better. Hey, let's do that again. <laughs> Except we're on the right side, this side, where it belongs. Where it belongs, right here. And we need some glue. Double glued. The first layer glue was just, you know, end grain filling sealer. Hopefully I don't poke my finger on any of those nails I just pulled that I didn't grind down enough. And just slap it on here. Again, this one really doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. Again, I like it to be at least close to square, but it really doesn't have to be. Because it doesn't really hold anything except for this board together. And we will go on either side of that. These nails hold pretty good, huh? Little pin nails. And that is that. That's all better now. And let's run a little sandpaper down the edge of this. Get rid of my ooey gooey fingerprints from the glue in my fingers because I'm a slob. And wipe it out on the inside. And look, I did it right this time. And this thing can go away. So I have more space here for this stuff so I can keep it handy. And there is that. Now I have to make a back piece to go where I just screwed it up. <laughs> Thank you. 
Little salmon to clean up the glue uh, smudgies from where I screwed up. This thing slides pretty well and there's no play. So this will work. I have to make a back piece here now. What's everyone up to? Who am I talking to? Bob! What's up, Bob? How is life? No, measure once, cut eight times. Screw it up at least three. Fix it till you're properly broken. Don't you know. That's the right way to do it. That measure freaking once crap. Seriously, you know who you're talking about here. <laughs> oh, what do I have that I can use for a backboard? That's great. This is a really nice piece of plywood that I can't get out of here because it's catching on something. It does have a bad edge. This is a really nice one, too. And the green's kind of going the wrong way. Although I can cut it off here. I mean, that still bridges everything. If I double this up, I have enough. I hate cutting up this good stuff for this crap, but is it flat and true? It is. Let's do it. Let's use it. It's got some hairy stuff here, so cutting it off, burying it. This was actually, believe it or not, now that I look at it, I know what this is. This used to be my bed frame for my old bed. <laughs> not that you guys care. Let's go about that big. A little bit taller on the back, so it'll be a little better. And run it through. I need power. I should just put a splitter on there so I can run the tools, but I kind of like shutting this one off now and again. And on. This thing runs so much smoother after that belt. That belt change is freaking awesome. I mean, it really is. It makes it, like, really, really awesome. Let's see. That's all yucky back there. That's all yucky back there. But this is kind of smooth, and I can sand that out. So... Let's make that the top, that the bottom. I can sand this out, it won't matter because the board will be down here. And I can glue that together, just like that. This won't matter because it will be on the back of it. And that'll work. Let's glue it up. Right? Now I'm questioning myself to the max. I really like this space. I would really like to make that a square push. You know, the material sits up against me. I think I'm gonna. That's all going down nice. And that goes down nice. So even though there's some gunkies here, I think I will sand them out real quick. At least reasonably smooth. Noise. One. 
Again, this is just a temporary sled anyways. So I'm not like ultra concerned about it as long as it actually is flat and square. As long as this is square to the, the runners and the blade, and my ear itches. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. It's just a temporary sled. Although I'll probably use it forever because if I know me, once it works, it works and I don't care anymore. So what's Bob up to? Sun's going down, Lala. Yeah. No, yeah, still freaking sunny here. Freaking hot. I'm sweating. Like, literally sweating. Let's glue this thing together. And I'm going to be smart and go, do not nail from here to here. Because that will be about where the blade goes through. So, a little more sanding should I miss the spot. All that is is old glue from whatever I had this glue with. Actually, I think that was old, uh, that's why it's not sanding off so easily. I know what it is. It's Gorilla Glue. Uh, not Gorilla Glue. Yeah, Gorilla Glue. Yeah. The foamy, wet kind. And I'm not even going to spread it out. That should be enough for this because, again, this is just a temporary thing. And where's my gun? I don't have power to it, but it's probably enough pressure still. I'm going to get it just smooth here on the bottom and put one nail in it. And it probably poked through. It did just a little bit, you dumbass. They didn't angle it. Uh, you know, nobody's perfect. Certainly not me. I am not perfect. But if I angle it, run it out of air, it will hold just fine and uh, not pop through. Yeah, a couple of them pop through. It's all right. They hit the casting iron. I'll make this the front. That way it's all back here and I can just sand them, grind them off. I'm going to grind them off right now because they're going to poke my fingers. I didn't angle it enough, but they did poke through. It just barely. But just enough. And as long as I make this the front edge, it won't matter. Because now they won't catch my damn fingers no more. So this has to go here. And I'm going to put it right there. So it's nice and tall, and the saw blade can go through, and it'll hold it up. I could have made it longer, but I didn't. But now this needs to be square, like truly square. Honestly, and truly square. Which ain't gonna be the easiest thing to do because I kind of did this half-ass backwards like I do with everything. <laughs> like I do with everything. Honestly and truly square. 
right about there. What I think I'll do is do that again. I'll put some glue on it, and I will do the magic uh, Insta glue trick with it. I need more accelerator, but that's life. So let's put some real glue on. And then some Insta glue. Whoa, this puts out way too much. And then drop it on here. Right around there. And then make sure it's square. And that's it right there. And it's I'm squaring it to the runner. Hopefully that insta glue will hold in a minute where I didn't put any accelerator on it. We will wait. Oh, that's right. You're in Euro European. You're a European. -y. European in Europe. I forgot you were over there. I thought you were only over there for the weekend. Are you over there for uh, a week or something? Which would make more sense because it's a long ass trip to only go for a weekend. Especially for you, because you're on the other side of the country. Do you go up and over Asia, or do you go through the U.S. and across? The pond. Or did you go across the pond to Asia, and then across Asia? It's probably faster to go across the U.S. and then over the pond here to Europe, huh? How'd you go, Bob? The llama wants to know. All right, that should be holding by now with the Insta glue, Hopefully I got it straight. If not, oh well, I can shim it. But I believe it should be. And I dropped my clean rag on the floor so it's not clean anymore. And we basically now have a cross cut sled. We do, we do. And it didn't hold. It just moved. Damn it. Let's try squaring it up again and make sure it holds. And maybe this time I'll put some nails in it. I need to uh, charge up the compressor again. Get some air. Air me up, compressor. Hey, it's still square. Looking perfect, even. Excuse me, let's just leave it there for a minute while the compressor charges up. it off the back here a little bit and put nails on it. What are we at for pressure? We're at 90 pounds. That's more than enough to still only need 65. Not where the blade's going to go. That should do it. And we can unplug that. Because I don't like this to do it just gen up anytime it wants. We now have a cross cut side. And it hits the blade.
Now I'm hoping I got this fairly square here to the blade and the thing. I look, I'm just looking at this and this kind of uh, changed here. <laughs> so, and I did it off the back, not the front, but worst case scenario, I can shim it. So, Bob, how'd you get there? Did you go by, uh, how, how'd you get across the pond? I do want to cut it. The one thing I always do, and I've seen other people do it too, I put a block on the back where the blade comes through. I'm going to cut it. I'll put a block on the, fight out where the blade comes through. I'll put a block here so the blade's never exposed when you're using it. You don't accidentally, like, you know, go and put your thumb into the blade because that would be something I would do. I'm preventing myself from pulling a llama. But that's pretty good. So let's plug her in. Hopefully it won't start because I'm a dumbass left it on. And uh, we will do a f initial small cut. through here, right, yeah, I know to put a block there, so I don't cut my thumb off. chunk of scrap something for the back here what do i got oak fine it don't matter something fairly big and blocky the blah, blah, blocky what do i got what do i got probably have a chunk of pressure trees over here i do but it's kind of ratty i do but it's kind of ratty but i do have a chunk of Peter here that I could use and kind of even double up if I wanted to. Hmm. Hmm. Do I want to use this? It's kind of a piece I might use for something else later. Yeah, I'm going to hang on to that. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing, but here's one. Uh, here's a piece. It's just a chunk of pressure treated. I can just snap that on the back like so. So when I push through, I don't cut my thumb off unless I'm a real dumbass and push all the way through. Which, you know, would be something I would do. But not this time. And I actually can put it that away. Which I think I will. Also holds it kind of square because I can uh, attach it to here and here, which tightens up the uh, sled to the head part. Is that what I want to do? You think it is? Sure. Why not? Right. Let's slather a little glue on there. Whatever I do with the glue. Not sure how I'm going to nail it yet because the nails won't reach through because it's doubled up. But you know what I will do? 
I will uh, get a clamp and use the crazy glue, but I will clamp it this time. So it holds better. And it might take a couple of minutes, but that's nice. Put a couple of drops of crazy glue around. I don't know if you guys really can't see what I'm doing. Put a bunch of regular glue around. Or all around the crazy glue. <laughs> or star bond or whatever brand this happens to be. And then just put it there and clamp it in place. With a clamp reach. Yeah. Sort of. Make sure I want to lift it up just a hair. So it's not writing on the table. Come on. And it's about perfect. I think what I can do, I don't break it is put a couple of screws from the back into it. This is exactly what I think I'll do. Mm -hmm. What do I have for screws? I have some, let's see, anything like two inch or smaller. Anything over an inch, inch and five eighths, inch and a half, inch and five eighths trim. I think inch and five eighths will be all right. And I need the little trim bit, which is right here. And we'll impact that puppy on there. How does that sound for a deal? A dealio. Ooh, I don't think I can get the drill in there. Uh, that's not going to work. So I can give it a little angle. I guess I will. That's just what I'll do. Let's just give it a little angle. Angle the dangle. But I will use a longer screw. Instead of the five inch, so I'll use a two inch because I'm angling it. Which I think I got some two or two and a halves here somewhere. Inch and three quarters. Yeah, these will be enough. These are T25s or T20. They are T25s. So we will use these screws. Don't need this bit anymore, but whatever. And this bit. And we will pre drill a hole right here. So I can get it started. This drill bit is freaking toast. As long as it's not in the way of the saw blade, which is just what it's going to do, angling it like that, you dumbass. That's going to go right to the saw blade, isn't it? Yep, sure is. Change in the plan. We'll go next to it and angle it down. So it won't go into the saw blade. How's that sound for it? Quick fix. There it is, screw out. And that'll hold that in place. And I can put all the stuff away, give it a light sanding. And this thing should be done. Damn big. It's just too big. I'm going to have to make a new Milwaukee holder y thing. Because I was given a couple of uh, Milwaukee 4 amp, the big square batteries, and they don't.
stay in my little 3D printed Milwaukee battery holdery thing. They're bigger and fatter in every way, shape, and form. Standing. Pretty good, pretty stable, square. It's probably gonna change because I use freaking regular old hardwood maple. I think I, I put some rear tabs on it, but I think I'm gonna cut them off. In fact, I think I'm gonna cut them off right now. <laughs> right this very minute. Right this very minute, you know what? I'm not going to change this one. I have another oscillating tool that I can much quicker put a cutting head on and cut them off instead of switching the little one over. I can use my monster one, which I really don't use anymore. <laughs> and I kind of like the little one better. But this thing's way more ballsy. But I really don't need ballsy anymore. That's a nut. But it's massive. I'm going to put the grinder away too now. And that way, I can now keep the sander on this and just sand what I cut off and make it all nice and smooth. Thank you. 
And that just makes it so they'll start into the uh, lines better. And then, last but not least, she gets to go to wax. Wax. Tacos! You don't know what this is? This is a uh, crosscut sled for the. Oh, phone drink. Is there anybody I care about? Probably not. Where the hell is my phone? Someone from I have no idea where. I don't even know what state or town or country that is. So I'm guessing it's just spam. Spam. Is it the wax for the super slipperiness? Super slippery. The ultra smooth operation. And the super quick cross cut sled is basically done. And again, this was not the best way to do it. It would have been better off setting this back square, like perfectly square and doing the whole, there's like ways you can set this back fence, like really, really perfect. And I probably should, and I still might. Um, it's easy to reset. Not easy, but I can reset it. I can just put a filler in. And wax these all up so they slide in their little slats like a dream. And it protects it some. It keeps it from getting yucky. Control of sawdusty stuff. So Bob, you never answered. You still here, Bob? How how how'd you fly across the pond? I'm assuming you went across the US and then across the pond. You didn't go across Asia. But you never know. Just going across Asia would also mean kind of flying close to Well, not really. I don't know. Maybe you went to Australia first, and then across. Because you were on the other side of this here country. So you got to fly all the way across the country, and then across the pond to get to Prague. Are you still in Prague? Or did you go to, um, isn't it London where the, the other show is this weekend? Or this week? It's like right now, isn't it? Actually, the TCT or whatever it is, isn't that in England right now? Or something? Ooh, that's slippery. Slip dippery. That is seriously slip dippery. Oh, that's perfect. All right, let's raise up the blade. And uh, I'm going to want it about this high. Plus, ooh, it's closer than I want it. Oh, well. That'll work. That's the height of the cutting board. There we go, cross cut sled. 
little sanding where I just cut it. And she's good to go. Let's take a chunk of wood and cut it on it. Just cause. What do I got here that's scrappy that I don't care about? What about this old chunk of pine? Not really tall enough. I may, that sounds so funny, that's this blade, by the way, Here. this blade's warped, the cheap blade, it's a cheapo blade, it cuts pretty well for a cheapo blade, this is literally a home uh, harbor freight blade, I'm going to have to put a, a higher piece right here, but I'm not going to do it right now, because I got crap I got to do, it's getting late. It is almost four o'clock. And I've been working on this long enough. And I gotta think about how I'm gonna do it. If I raise this up. I need to bridge this so I can cut right through here. I was hoping this was tall enough, but it ain't. Because otherwise this will just flat. Which is the whole point of this. Wax. Use it. Chunk of wax. But it works, it slides, it holds it square. There's almost no play, there's a little bit. But nowhere near as much as my other one. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's what it does. It cuts things really, really square. Like a chop box, but even more square. And there we go. I'm gonna have to kill this because I gotta go. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be people inside screaming. What's up, Groggy? I guess Bob's not here anymore because he's not answering the question. There's only five people left watching. I've been doing this for an hour and a half. But anyways, we have a new crosscut sled. It's not perfect. I'm probably going to have to put another board here that's taller. To hold this. So I'm going to have to cut right through this. But that's all right. I'll just add one more on the outside. That'll make it even stronger because I can actually attach it to the end grain of the um, sled plywood and put it just down. It'll make it even stronger. Stronger! We like it stronger. It's going to have to be taller like this one. But I only need to go from here to here. That'll be enough. I go from here to here in the sled lines. And then I can cut cutting board end pieces and glue them together and they will be awesome. I need about three more of these sleds minimum. I need a much bigger one, I need a wider one. This is just for what I'm working on now building the cutting boards. I'd rather use this than this Excuse me, then the DeWalt table saw it. The uh, camera slash laptop is sitting on right now. <laughs> and it should work just fine. It should be just fine. I might just put a piece of 2x4 across the front. But there you go. Crosscut sled. Stupidly simple. Stupidly fast. Works like a charm. Bottom's covered in sawdust, if you can see it. They didn't buff out the wax, the wax is still on there, but that ain't gonna hurt nothing. And there you go, cross that foot.
cross cutting, you know, with a sled. Cheers. Did work pretty well, actually. As long as I got this square to the blade, or these, which I, I know I did. In all reality, when I cut, I cut from this side and then I cut from that side. So like if I'm gonna glue two pieces together, I will cut one on this side and I'll cut one on this side. So even if this thing's slightly off, the two sides will match. I actually sometimes, I've done a few where I uh, pitch it deliberately. So it's like an angle cut and it gives it a little flare. As long as you do one on one side and one on the other, no matter what that angle is, they'll always meet up and be a 90. So there's that crosscut sled for the table saw. And I'm out. Have a uh, wonderful day, guys.